So let us look at the problem statement. Okay, we'll be using retail DB uh, data set. And as you have seen, this is the data model. We have orders, order items, which are transactional tables, uh, where each and every order, there will be an entry in orders with attributes such as order ID, order customer ID, and order status. And then uh, each order might have uh, multiple order items associated with it. And the details about each of the order item will get into here. And so on and so forth. I have covered this as part of uh, uh, earlier video, uh, one of the earlier videos as well. That being said, let us define a problem statement. The problem statement is to get daily revenue by product considering completed and closed orders. When we say daily revenue, we require date. As we are talking about by product, we have to go and get the information for each product, such as product name, etc. And then uh, we need to just consider completed and closed orders, no matter whatever status is there uh, for the orders. We just we are just interested in completed and closed orders. Okay. Once we get the revenue uh, for each product uh, on daily basis, we need to sort the data by ascending order by date and then descending order by revenue computed for each product for each day. So instead of randomly uh, returning the data, data needs to be sorted by date in ascending order. And within each date, um, uh, each product might get might generate revenue, whatever uh, it have generated. We want to get the topmost product for each day at the top, and then we want to get the data in descending order. And from products, we need certain information, and we have to uh, get that information from products. Um, by broadcasting the product's data set and perform lookup into the uh, broadcasted hash map. So this is primarily to cover broadcast variables uh, as part of the curriculum. Uh, and uh, uh, in certifications, uh, they might explicitly say this or they might not. You just need to make the call whether you want to use broadcast or not. And it, you, you should be familiar with broadcast variables and it is part of uh, some of the certification exams such as uh, uh, HDPCD Spark. For Cloudera, um, uh, they haven't highlighted broadcast variables, but uh, Hortonworks, they have highlighted broadcast variables. No matter what, it is very important to understand broadcast variables. Also, you should uh, uh, get the number of completed and closed orders when data is being filtered. And that means that we should use something called accumulator and we will see that. So this is the problem statement which will cover most of the aspects of course park. Uh, as uh, we, we are asking products to be broadcasted, um, the data of products uh, has to be read locally. And you can see here, data for products is available locally under this location. So we should be able to read the data from local file system and we should be able to use as part of our program. Uh, say, uh, but orders and order items, data is available in HDFS and we have to leverage that and we have to get the data from HDFS location. And once the data is processed, once you get the data um, aggregated uh, for each day and sorted in descending order by uh, revenue generated for each product, um, we have to save that information uh, both in HDFS location as well as local location. This is the HDFS location and this is the local location. And solution needs to be stored under this file. Okay, and this is the problem statement um, simulating what you might get in the certification. It might not be exactly in the same manner, but there will be uh, um, good amount of similarities between uh, this problem statement and uh, between what you get in the certifications. And when it comes to difficulty level, this is a lot more difficult than uh, certification standards. They will not give problem statements like this. Uh, they might uh, give problem statement covering one or two aspects of the transformation. Uh, this itself can be uh, eight to nine problem statements uh, in itself. Uh, but it is a very good approach to understand the uh, nuances of course park and then um, um, 
and then use the skills that are required uh, by solving this problem when you give the certification okay don't expect that or don't get overwhelmed that the questions will be like this in the certification and uh, it will be very tough to to complete it in 10 minutes or 20 minutes whatever it is this problem statement the solution for this problem statement takes its own time uh, and uh, towards the end of the curriculum i will give the exercises uh, similar to the certification uh, standard this one is primarily to understand the uh, uh, nuances so that we can uh, prepare well and give the certification no matter uh, what the difficulty level is okay so that being said um, before uh, getting further i would like to show you the environment uh, how the how you will get the environment when giving the certification and uh, how you actually uh, can start in that environment so typically uh, if when you give the certification once you register for the certification once you start uh, taking the certification exam they will uh, um, ask you to install some plugin and once the plugin is installed they might capture your screen and uh, they might uh, give you a remote desktop access and that remote desktop will look like this okay and uh, there might be some uh, um, uh, files um, browsers etc when you log into the remote desktop uh, most likely the remote uh, desktop environment will be uh, on linux it could be centos or it could be ubuntu it doesn't matter what environment they give it to you uh, typically there will be terminal also in this case in this remote desktop i haven't set up the terminal but there there could be terminal also if you could not see the terminal probably under utilities uh, you will find the terminal okay and this is the terminal which you can use to launch spark shell and start uh, solving the problems you can open as many terminals as you want there is no requirement that you you have to use only one Yeah, it's under system tools, not utilities, I'm sorry. So you, I have two terminals now. Okay. And then on top of these things, uh, they, they might uh, post the questions in a folder here. Um, uh, when it comes to the certification exam, and the, they will give the instructions. And also you will have browser like this. And the browser might have bookmarks here okay and that bookmarks is related to uh, can be related to the documentation or it can be related to uh, the uh, web interfaces uh, such as name node web ui um, uh, resource manager web ui etc so you should be able to uh, figure out the information of your cluster and all those things by just clicking on those bookmarks in this case i don't have but uh, at the time of certifications you might end up having bookmarks here which will take you uh, to the necessary web, web UI interfaces. And also sometimes they might have the official documentation available as part of the bookmarks. Or it could be, it could be a file here, uh, when you double click, it will open up the official documentation for you. So documentation will be available, the certifications are open book, but uh, uh, you should avoid as much as possible referring the documentation but at times it can give you uh, uh, the refer the required reference material uh, for some of the topics which you do not remember or uh, uh, do not prepare in some time uh, in some cases that being said they will also give an editor uh, such as sublime text in this case they might also give you intellij and many other things but I don't recommend to use any of the heavyweight uh, uh, editors such as IntelliJ or Eclipse. Rather, try to use Sublime Text or VA Editor. If you are familiar with VA Editor, just, uh, uh, just use VA Editor uh, itself uh, to, to develop the uh, programs. If you are not familiar with uh, VA Editor, just open Sublime Text or whatever editor they give. 
Typically, Linux also comes with the editor called gedit. You can use that also. Yeah, now you got the sublime text. And uh, you can start typing it here. Once you uh, type it, based upon the location where you have to save, you can click on save as and you can save your solution to whatever location and they ask you okay and be very careful uh, that you have the right code uh, if they ask you to preserve the code and don't uh, um, have the unnecessary lines of code as part of your program most likely they will only look at the results but some cases they might review your code also in some of the certifications okay so this is how you can actually save it to wherever you want and uh, um, uh, as part of the terminal um, or um, on the desktop you will be able to access the Hadoop cluster so for example if you want to launch spark yeah. uh, in uh, Scala context you can say spark shell and master yar cons spark dot ui dot port equal to and hit enter uh, it will launch the spark shell for you also if you want PySpark you just run PySpark and it will uh, get it for you you will get the uh, spark in Python context so this is how the environment will look like um, so I will try to use this environment uh, to uh, to demonstrate uh, going forward so that you get feel of it um, and also very soon I might launch the certification simulator uh, where you will be able to get access uh, environment similar to this with questions and all those things um, and you can actually prepare here we will not be reviewing the results it's self-evaluation uh, but we will try to provide uh, an environment at a meager cost